Welcome back to the Tavern, friends. Before you recruit some new minions for the battle, let me welcome you to episode 18 of Tavern Tales. I'm your host, Tumbly Drunk, and tonight we'll uh, let you know basically all the news in Hearthstone. Primarily, we do have a new feature for Tier 7, which is, of course, part of HS Replay. We got a BlizzCon 2020 update straight from Blizzard. And of course, we got a couple of reflections that we'll dive into before tonight's pick two, which will be a battle between uh, House Mana Storm as Millhouse and Maleficent go up against one another. Uh, but before we get into the news and introduce you to my co-host, let me just quickly take a moment and thank everyone who is joining us in the tavern tonight for our live show on Twitch. And of course, thank all of our repeat listeners out there. So joining me tonight, as always, is my co-host, Ednar and Ed. You know, it's been uh, two weeks since our last episode. I kind of took this past week off just because not really a whole lot going on. And, I mean, honestly, for me, like, I was just trying to fight my way back more on that here in just a little bit. But how have these uh, past two weeks been treating you? I've uh, been pretty good. I've, I've had my ups and downs, um, you know, staying around 52-ish uh so you know it's it's been good i've 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 actually come to realize i've been playing worse with the top tier characters mm -hmm. and playing better with like the tier bottom tier two type like middle of the road characters um which has been interesting like i i just you know my play style just doesn't fit like a death wing or um i mean i've still been having good with Norse Dome and uh, Rafan. But yeah, it's just it just doesn't fit me with Deathwing or Kael'thas or you know what I mean? Like it's just one of those games where you know, I, I'm I'm not doing as good with the top tier, but I'm doing better with the mid tier. So give me Toki over <laughs> over the rest of them, you know, stuff like that. So but otherwise it's been pretty good. How's your week been? Or two weeks been? Uh, kind of rough, actually. You know, since our last episode, I was at 62.32. Uh, as of this recording, I am 60.48. Uh, but it was, it was, it was fairly hectic. Uh, so looking back, I played quite a bit within the past two weeks. Uh, but there was this six game stretch where they were all a bottom four finishes uh looking at it uh i played like toki now stormu yogsaron kael'thas flurgle and kael'thas in this run okay so all of those minus toki right uh probably tier one you you would you would say uh yeah. didn't help me <laughs> uh but you know in that span i lost uh, probably close to 260 Raiden between those six games. So I dipped, uh, as low as 59.33. Uh, and that was kind of like the low point that I've been at for, for, you know, probably at least a, a month at this point. Uh, and ever since then, it's just kind of been like an uphill battle trying to, you know, claw my way back at, you know, ever since like that six game streak, I've been a little bit more consistent you know, I got, like, a third and then a fifth, and I was like, okay. And then I tied for fourth, uh, which was technically a fifth, but, like, you know, since it was a tie, I still got, like, a net gain, a very minimal one at that. But I, in, like, my past, like, five games, it's basically been top four finishes outside of, like, a fifth place game. So I've actually, like, ch chipped away at that Raiden loss that I was dealing with. So I'm at least above 6K again, because that was, like, my big concern. I was like, oh, man. I'm in a rough patch, uh, and, you know, like, I debated, like, seven away after, like, the third, like, bottom four, but I'm like, I'm, I'm just gonna stick with it, then it just kept happening, and I'm like, all right, I'm definitely at the point now where I'm like, I'm good, I'll, I'll reset, I'll go play any alt or whatever, uh, and, you know, at that point, my, my alt account, like, my pick two account was, like, 60, like, honestly, like, around, like, what my main account was at prior, at around, like, 6,200, okay. so, like, both of my accounts are still above 6k, uh, but I did play a little bit more on the alt account once I hit that rough patch, and it was it was still working out fairly well for me. 
on the pick to account, regardless of who I was choosing. So, very rocky week on the main account. Uh, but, you know, really, it, it's not about uh, quantity, it's about quality. And, you know, I had some really bad losses. And some losses that felt a lot better than others. Uh, but, you know, I've gotten to do a couple of, like, different tests, which we'll talk about in, like, kind of, like, the off-kilter, uh, strats that we've kind of been using. Uh, but, you know, since our last episode, we actually did finally get around to, uh, like, our, our, our duo queue, uh, basically where you were playing and I was spectating, uh, as well. So we, we finally got that out of the way. Uh, it actually went pretty well. I don't know if you have, like, the stats and stuff on hand, but, you know, I think Not played... exactly for those matches. Okay. Uh, but I did gain 200 uh, rating. Okay, so, yeah. From it. We played four games, and I went up 200. I think uh, we had one really, really bad game. Mm -hmm. um, and then two top threes, and then I think a fourth place. Um, so, you know, it was it was good. Might have and we might have gotten a win. I I can't remember off the top of my head, but it did go it did go well. Well, you know, luckily there's a bot of it, so you know we can always circle back later. That is very true. Uh which we're not gonna do as we're podcasting, but that's besides the point. But if you guys are interested in that, to see in how we fared as our uh, individual cube, but as two people, <laughs> uh, go back and check that out on Edinar's Twitch channel, and you can find it on there. But anyways, let's jump into the news. So to start things off, we actually got some news that dropped today about hsreplay.net, uh, where they have added personal stats for the Battlegrounds as part of their Tier 7 uh, and bundle subscriptions out there. So what this is, is quite a bit. Uh, you have the MMR over time, so you can see how you... Uh, your rank kind of like evolves over time across different expansions and through different ratings. They also have performances based on heroes as well as compositions. So you're able to track how you perform with each hero uh, with stats uh, that, you know, are basically like how many games you've played, uh, what your MMR gain or loss has been, your average placement, you know, things like that. Yeah, And then they also have the option to compare globally, so you can see how you stack up against the competition by comparing your stats against other players. Now, you know, and for the most part, you and I have been relying more so on our own input data. <laughs> uh, I think I've definitely been doing it for probably quite quite a bit longer than you have because i know like you just you started recently doing it with the uh the battlegrounds diary which i showed mm -hmm. you but you know this is automated so i i know moving forward uh it's... we're ditching everything else <laughs> oh yeah no everything else is ditched because all you have to have open is well you need a, a tier seven account mm -hmm. fine uh but then you just need to have hearthstone deck tracker open which you should ha be having whether you have the tier seven uh, or not. <laughs> like, you should just be having that. I'll I'll be honest, Ed. I never had deck record oh, open. It's so nice. It's convenient because I mean, otherwise you literally have to memorize everything, and it's just not like one of the best features it has is at the top right hand corner is like the stars mm -hmm. so like if you're like if i triple this what could i get and then right. you click on like four stars and, and it gives brings up every four star um every four star card you can get you know it tells you what everyone else is playing it tells you your odds which is also really bad but you can turn you can switch that so it tells you your odds after the match not during which i highly suggest you do because you will just be infuriated yeah by how many of these games you lose when you only have like a 20 percent chance of losing yeah that's a that's a good tilt management tool in the option yes it is uh but no it should you should definitely do that and even towards the tier list you need to have the hearthstone deck tracker open mm -hmm. to affect the tier list so Always have it open. 
Yeah, absolutely. So when you're using this, uh, I will say, like, I closed Hearthstone after the first game. It did update, like, right away. Uh, so I've, I've only played one game with it on, but, like, the stats were there. Uh, so when you pull up your stats on HS Replay, it will basically show you uh, what your combat win rate was. It will tell you, like, your placement distribution, uh, how you rank up globally. Uh, and then, you know, it keeps track of, like, pick rate as well as things like that. So... Uh, you know, when you're on that, like, hero performance, uh, sheet, you know, if you just click on the hero, that will pull up, like, the global stats, uh, which, you know, have actually changed quite a bit, uh, over the past two weeks, now that we have, you know, we're getting close to, like, four million games at this point on this current patch, and the, the tiers have been quite a bit more refined, uh, at this point as well. Uh, so, you know, Kael'thas still doing pretty damn well with the 3.96 average placement. Uh, and, you know, on the, on the lower end, you know, if you're wondering how uh, Maiev Swanson is doing, it's still pretty bad, third from the bottom. Vosh not too uh, far ahead of Maiev, uh, who is kind of... Uh, slightly below middle of the pack for Tier 4, so... Not not too many changes in regards to that front, but if you're looking to keep, you know, tabs of your statistics, and you don't want to be the one to have to worry about inputting all of the data yourself, I highly recommend you guys go out and get this. They do have a bundle available for HS Replay. I want to say it's like $7.99, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and for the amount of stuff that you get is highly highly worth it uh so i'm looking forward to seeing how the stats are gonna kind of like evolve over time uh but you know for me you know this saves a little bit of time uh in between games as well whereas before i would have to like you know drop down like who i who i was playing what uh what position i got in the lobby what my net gain or loss was what composition i was playing any sort of notes that I had about the game that happened. Whereas this, I could just pull everything up, look at my stats, break it down by hero, break it down by uh, average placement and everything uh, that I could do to an extent, but just not to the same lengths uh, that HS Replay is offering. So awesome feature. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing with this a bit more. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's phenomenal. You need to have it. Uh, if you, you're serious about Battlegrounds, or, I mean, even if you just play regular standard Hearthstone, mm -hmm. Deck Tracker is amazing to have because it tracks what cards you have left, it tracks what cards they've played, it you know, it does stuff like that, uh, which is, is vital. So Hearthstone, Deck Tracker, amazing, HS Replay, giving out all the stats. So definitely something worthwhile. I'm glad I have a subscription to it. Personally, I, I think it's just great. Oh. So go out there, get it. Definitely. Ugh. I I mean, I I have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, times where I forget to have deck tracker on, mm -hmm. and that's that's on. Because yeah, it's I need to have it more. <laughs> If only there was an option to have it, like, auto-start whenever Windows loads. Right? If only. Yeah. If Yeah, wait, that, that that's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Shut up. <laughs> but anyways, in other news, we do have an update on this year's BlizzCon. Uh, the update is, there is no BlizzCon for 2020. Uh, so after considering all the options, the company has decided to not hold BlizzCon for 2020, but they haven't ruled out doing something in an online format, but should they do that, it wouldn't likely be until sometime in early 2021. Uh, so what does that mean for, like, the esports titles that we would see uh, culminating every year at BlizzCon for, like, World Championships and things like that? Well, we don't really know. Uh, so I, I would imagine if they are going to move to an online, you know, format, they'd probably also move all the esports stuff to that same time uh, as well. But now I, I know, you know, you and I literally just talked about this not even like two hours ago. Uh, not too much of a surprise that this decision was made. 
Uh, I, I am happy to know earlier rather than later, just so I don't have to, you know, deal with mm. all of the planning ahead of time because, uh, you know, BlizzCon is not a cheap investment or trip by any stretch of the imagination. And, I you know, I know a lot of people travel uh, across the globe just to get, you know, to BlizzCon in itself. Uh, but, you know... <laughs> Who knows what they would have even announced this year anyways, uh, as, you know, we've kind of talked about just because, like, a lot of their announcements uh, came last year. Yeah, I don't think they would have announced really anything, and and Hearthstone doesn't really warrant uh, a whole BlizzCon. <laughs> like, uh, you know, you hate to put it that way, but but they don't. Um, you know, more or less, you are probably looking at something along the lines of you know an online tournament mm -hmm. obviously um and then yeah it's it's online tournament with probably i can't remember if they did like some weird um thing last year where because they it, like the grandmasters and stuff like that were uh, played all online mm -hmm. it wasn't the finals weren't i don't believe were at blizzcon it's kind of like overwatch where they had the overwatch league finals but like this was more of a show match type thing with the world cup i think that's what they did with hearthstone i could see them doing some big battlegrounds um event can you? Comes... I can. I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I have to bite my tongue when it comes to Battlegrounds events, knowing that they've had one, and that's it. Yes, but I will say this. It, um... It also means that, uh, like, they could just get a bunch of streamers. Mm -hmm. And that would do just wonders. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, it's it's one of those things where they could get a bunch of, like, personalities in there. And they've done this before. Like, they did a $50,000 tournament, Battlegrounds tournament, with just, like, Twitch streamers and people like that. Mm -hmm. So I could definitely see them doing something along those lines. I mean, why not? I don't know. I guess part of me is just like, well, we like the Battlegrounds news has been few and far between. It's just hard to be too optimistic. <laughs> I do not blame you at all for that. Yeah, I guess part of it is just the fact that like we don't know what the timetable would be for something like custom lobbies. Because once those are available or, you know, just the functionality is there, then we would see a surplus mm -hmm. of stuff happening in regards to events uh, or tournaments, you know, things like that. Nope, I, I completely agree. I think they need to have these open, like, um, basically allow us... We, we're still waiting on the being able to do something with eight people. Like, that's mm -hmm. what it is. That is what it's all about right there. And they said they want to do it, and we're almost... We're not at a year, but we're... A couple months away from a, a year when they announced that they were going to be bringing it out um, at BlizzCon last year. So, and we still haven't seen it. So, I expect it any day now. Um, so, hopefully, we get it, and then we can talk really talk about having like tournaments, like Battlegrounds tournaments. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be a lot of fun. We would have a lot of fun with that. Oh yeah. I, I cannot wait to do, like, monthly things with the community in regards to that uh, with other, like, Hearthstone podcasters or, you know, just community members as a whole. Uh, so, mm -hmm. outside of that, that's basically it for the news. Uh, so, this week, with our Tavern Reflections, I want to talk about two different things. Uh, I want to talk about dealing with Tilt uh, when it comes to, you know, video games or, you know, just playing Battlegrounds, as well as... You know, ways that we can try to, like, soft reset um, our performance, whether it's just, like, trying, like, off-kilter strategies, playing someone you normally wouldn't, 
pick in a situation, you know, things like that. So let's talk tilt. We've all been there. We've all had those moments where Bob's buddy tells us we have a 99% chance to win, and then for some godforsaken reason, we end up losing every single 50-50, you know, strike. And uh, we end up losing, we take 33 damage, and then we try to swear that person off the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like any game, Battlegrounds is not immune to bad RNG causing you to tilt. So, 100% true. You know, we, we've, all, we've all been in situations where, you know, the Deathwing gets two early rat packs, just power levels, and you're just like, oh, well, this is a, this is a guaranteed loss. Uh, and, you know, Bob's Body, to an extent, doesn't, doesn't help uh, with Tilt by any stretch of the imagination. So, as you mentioned, Ed, earlier... Bob's uh, a dick. Bob, yeah, Bob <laughs> is dick. Uh, both Bartender Bob and, and... I mean, Bob can... Boomer Bob can be, too. Besides the point. But anyways, like, you can see, like, the percentages after mm -hmm. combat, <laughs> right? Highly recommend you do that. Because the worst thing is, is seeing those odds when you get into combat. You're just like, oh, this is the worst. Because if you don't get it, you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm trash. This is horrible. Um, so, yeah. No, it's it's definitely something where you're just like, oh, come on, stop it. Yeah, I, I will say I learned that lesson today uh, when I was running a Death Rattle Beast build. And this was not like Sorrowless Base or anything, but I had uh, two Gas Coilers, two Rat Packs, two Gold Rins, and a Golden uh, Baron. And every single hit popped one of my Death Rattles as early as possible, so I didn't really get the value out of any of them. Mm-hmm. And even though I had, like, I want to say it was, like, 85 or 86% win rate chance, did not happen because of how bad the, the RNG aspect was for uh, just the combat turn as a whole, where every single hit went against me to the worst possible degree. And at that point, I was like, all right, and you have to combat. Right. Like, that was enough. Uh, so if you have deck tracker which you should as we mentioned especially now that they have personalized stats for you guys uh do not have it up full time just look at the stats after the combat phase uh because you know you don't want to like see that fixate on that number like oh i have a two percent shot at like not winning this round and then you end up you know not winning that round and then you're like well what what the f right. uh so that's just one example. Another thing that I do a lot with any sort of competitive game, uh, which kind of goes against what I said earlier, because I didn't follow my own advice, but... Walking when, away. Walking, knowing when to walk away. So I know in Overwatch primarily, uh, when it comes to like comp, I have like the rule of three. Where if I have three games in a row that don't feel close that are very steamrolly or just aren't competitive or anything like that i stop you know i i don't like <laughs> wait 30 minutes and come back you know i just stop or you know i go play arcade uh that's that's no different for for battlegrounds usually at that point i just like do the tavern brawl or you know unranked anything like that but you know there is no un unranked for battlegrounds who knows maybe that might come maybe it won't i don't know uh but traditionally like if i have a bottom four finishes and i don't mean bottom four in the sense that if i have like a sixth place a fifth place and a fifth place and i'm gonna walk away because that isn't as extreme as say getting like consecutive seven place finishes or like an eight seven seven you know things like that because those are the ones that really get you if you have a, a stream of bad luck like that, you're always better to either hop off, take a break, or try something completely different, which is a risk in itself, which we'll get into. But the amount of work that it takes for you to climb back in Battlegrounds in particular is pretty hefty. As I mentioned, like I at one point had lost... You know, 260-something SR in, like, that six-game span where I did not take my own advice. And it took me 
probably about eight or nine days just to get that back. Now, granted, that is casual play. Mm -hmm. uh, playing a few games here and there, but that's still a very long time in order to dig myself out of that sort of hole. So if, if I'm having a streak go in on either side, you either stick, like keep queuing if you're above top fours, but walk away, like, if you're losing too much Raiden. But, you know, at the same time, if you don't really fixate on Raiden altogether, chances are, you know, you'll just keep you win anyway. So it really just depends on the person. But typically, if I have a streak, anything beyond three, Jaw just feels like that, that moment where, like, okay, I need to step away for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always step away before you say to yourself, I should have stepped away. <laughs> like and I know how silly that may sound, but it, it's it's you always think about stepping away after you should have stepped away, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just brutal. Um, everyone has it. You get a little less with battlegrounds, I think, than you do with other games. Yeah. Um, just because it's you know it's 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 nothing that's huge. Like, you, we've all been there with these games. Um, it's so RNG dependent that it's it's not a big deal, to be honest. Like, we, I mean, you you hear about like, like it's not Overwatch tilting, it's not Apex tilting, it's not regular Hearthstone tilting. It's we've all been on the 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 end of the the rng shit show uh so it's not as tilting as most games but it can definitely get tilting so just learn when to walk away i think that's really the, the best advice that that i can give anyone about any game just walk away. don't i wouldn't even try and play another game just step away from yeah, like, I I understand when people, um, when, like, when they're playing competitively and, like, they make mental notes of, you know, what led to the loss, you know, things like that. Uh, but when you're, when you're in that sort of mentality, when you're just not piecing things together, you're already starting behind. So, like, mm -hmm. your, your mental game is already kind of just shot at that point. And for you to just keep pushing forward just is going to lead to like more mistakes and you know you know it's happened more times than we we'd like to admit uh regardless of what game we're talking about uh so you know walking away is honestly just the best thing that you do through and through but if for for whatever reason you decide to stick with it i you know try try something different you know play a hero that you normally wouldn't pick you know, maybe go for a hero that's more middle of the pack or someone that's not in tier one. Because as I mentioned, like, in that streak, I played five heroes that at the time were considered to be tier one. All of which resulted in bottom four finishes. You know, just picking the best available hero isn't always necessarily going to result in a top four finish. Uh, so just coming to that sort of understanding going into really any uh, situation is always... Uh, ideal and you know worst case scenario if things don't go your way you know you could always just blame a certain celestial dragon one thing i will say is in this mode more than any other mode in any game your rating doesn't mean crap mm -hmm. it, it literally means like totem what do you gain being at 6,200 and me being at 5,200. Bragging rights. <laughs> nothing of nothing. actual note. <laughs> you get nothing for being at a higher rank. You don't get rewards for being at a higher rank or anything mm -hmm. like that. So your rating truly does not matter. Um, and and you kind of kind of got to think about that. Like obviously you want to try and get as high as you possibly can, but it's not worth it. It just isn't. So, so yeah, definitely just think of it that way. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just me. Yeah, so when it comes to, like, off-kilter approaches to Battlegrounds, I know, like, on our last episode, I talked about trying uh, a Sorrowless-specific build. 
And I know at yes. the time we were kind of like debating, well, is it better to stay at Tavern 1 or Tavern 2? Because Tavern 2 does offer quite a lot of death rattle options. So I've actually had a couple of games where I've been able to test this. Uh, and it does work best with Dance and Daryl. I will put that out there. Uh, and my stats between the two uh, were that the Forever 1 is night and day better than Forever 2. I have not had a game... Now, granted, this is a small sample size, but every Forever 1 game that I've played has resulted in a top 4 finish, whereas with Tier 2, it's been a little bit different. Uh, so, it, it obviously works best with Dance and Daryl, primarily just because, well, you can get higher stats uh, on those particular minions due to the dance mechanic in itself. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it usually results in having, you know, two Golden Soralisks, maybe three if you get lucky. Uh, and then you kind of, like, revolve around tripling the, uh, the uh, Divine Shield, uh, Death Rattle character. I think that's, what, Righteous Protector? Or is that, no, it's Selfless Hero. Yeah, Selfless Hero. You're primarily revolving around Selfless Hero, the Sorrowlisk, uh, and those are basically, like, the, the major... Uh, you know, particular minions that you're building around. You know, you can have some odds and ends there, whether it is uh, the the demon option that, you know, transfers its attack. But typically, you know, you have, like, one spot that you're just rotating, uh, you know, death rattle minions just to buff Zoralis through and through. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, a lot of situations where you can get, like, 60 attack, you know, 40 health on your Zoralis by the end of the game. And, you know, that's kind of been enough to... Uh, you know, just combat some of the other builds out there, which is great because, like, things like this are what I really enjoy about Battlegrounds. There are things that might appear out of the gate to be suboptimal that mm -hmm. can push you to top four or even a lobby win at times. And, you know, I, I know, like, a lot of people will just look at that and be like, well, how, how can it honestly work, <laughs> right? And then, like, it just, it scares them away from actually trying something different. And then they just kind of, like, stick to, like, their normal routine. But sometimes you just need to try something that is abnormal. Whether it's to just, like, soft reset after you're having a losing streak. Or if you, you know, just try it out of curiosity. Like, after, say, like, you watch something from, like, another, like, Hearthstone Battleground stream. Or if you see it from... Uh, like Kriparian, you know, who I, I know has done this for one of his videos here recently. Uh, but, you know, just don't be afraid to try something that is a little bit off the wall because you can get some pretty surprising results even if you don't think it has a shot in hell. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I have seen a lot of people try that, you know, that level one strat that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And it has not always worked out that well. Okay. Um, not that it just it doesn't work out well. It's the the fact that um, uh, they always they do move on. You know what I mean? Right. So like, uh, it basically like they stay at one or two as uh, for a long time. But then once it gets down to being like two gold, they move up. They they level up. They're behind everyone, so they have beefier minions, and they kind of build through that way. And then, because it's it's one of those things where that level one build is very good, and it's it it will get you a top four. Generally, it will get if you're looking for a safe way to get top four, that will probably get you a top four. Will it get you? A First or second, not generally, mm -hmm. because because you you'll run into poisons and and just people over time will get as beefy of minions that can deal with it, uh, and you're still dealing with level one. Minions. But it's it's kind of like you you go all in at the beginning, and then you just don't do anything after that for a while. Uh, but so, were, were there any it's, other... It's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. I will say that. It is a fun, fun mode to play. Yeah, it's just one of those things, so you're only really doing, like, four to six damage, primarily uh, running a composition like this. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so your games do tend to be a little bit longer. Uh, so do keep that in mind. But were there any other like sort of like off kilter approaches that you have tried here as of late? Ooh, as of late, uh, I'm honestly just running a lot of freaking Murlocs. I know that seems so stupid, but it's just, it's what I've been doing. I just truly enjoy playing Murlocs now because it has, it's like, one, I hate juggler demons. I, I, I hate them. Um, Never would have guessed. Dragons are fun. Dragons and, and Murlocs are the most fun I've had. Uh, I do I do get some fun out of the, the Divine Shield builds, but I think the craziest thing I've been kind of going for is going Reno and doing Death Rules. Okay. So then I would get a Baron, gold that, and then go Death Rattle build. It's it's not easy to pull off because one, you're you're as Reno, you need to survive them. Uh, and that's the big issue is surviving till you find one uh but it's you need to have a decent demon build once you get there or a death rattle build once you get there so that's that's a bit tricky but that's a lot of fun to pull off if you can do that mm -hmm. right on uh but yeah if anyone else has any other like off kilter stuff that you've been trying, please let us know. Because uh, I'm always interested in seeing like different approaches that people have, even ones that might not make a whole lot of sense to people uh, at like first glance or things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, it's it's that time of the week. You know, we we got to talk about things that are inevitable. You know, I'm talking about things like getting older. You know, like seeing yourself fail. Uh, you know, taking something important for granted, and of course, blaming Celestalon. You know, Celestalon got a little bit of a break on his birthday, and then that was it. Like, we're, we're back at it, and, you know, just because BlizzCon is cancelled doesn't mean, you know, we're gonna have less things to blame on him. If anything, that's just another thing that will just add to the laundry list that we have. Uh, it's just gonna be that much longer by the time I see him next. But anyways, Ed, you know, looking back, there's definitely been quite a few moments... Uh, that, you know, we could, we could blame on Celestalon. I don't know if I'd say I could blame the Lost streak on him, but, like, that, that Death Rattle one today was definitely the strongest candidate, primarily because, regardless of what my percentage to win the round was, it was the fact that this was a game that I, I was clearly in command of as Kael'thas. Uh, you know, I was on, like, a, a five-round round win streak, uh, I, because I got, like, good things to, uh, use on, like, the third, uh, Verdant Sphere, or, or whatever the hell they call it for his hero power, mm -hmm. uh, it, it offered me breathing room where I didn't even have a full board and I was able to level aggressively because most of those buffs were on a rat pack. But that round oh. that I, that I lost on, I, I want to say it was, like, turn 11 or turn 12. And, you know, in that round, as I mentioned, which is the one that did not go my way, where every death rattle was hit first, only got one spawn out of things, regardless of what it was, whether it was the Rat Pack or the Gas Coiler, uh, in, in this case, because it didn't strike the, the Gold Rin first, which would have been a lot better in this case, due to the fact that I was running, you know, a triple uh, Baron into this uh, death rattle build. But... It was the amount of damage that I took at this point in the game. Because I was sitting at 36 health. <laughs> and that's exactly how much damage I took in that round. That was complete RNG, everything going against me. But to take 36 damage in one round, I for sure thought, okay, there's no way I can get knocked out on this turn. Just no way. Yeah. Like, they, they can't have lethal. No one's going to do that much damage. I was wrong. And I, like, at that point, yes, I did turn the whole combat thing off until, like, after combat. But in that moment, like, I just sat there. And, like, and I the blankly heck? stared at my monitor for, like, three minutes until I walked out of the room. <laughs> like, I was like, what the hell just happened? Like... And then, of course, you know, I shouted 
you know, Celeste Lon's name because of it, but it was just one of those things where I don't think I've ever had such a distinct moment within Battlegrounds since it came out where I have felt so shell-shocked over a result of a round before. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I haven't had one like that. That's pretty damn drastic. <laughs> like, my Blade Celestial moment this week is way, way less dramatic than yours. This is more just an RNG issue of I went three round matches in a row where I faced AFK turn three. And I don't care what you say, you're not beating AFK turn three. Like, you have one minion, two minions on the board, probably. Maybe three, depending on how you play it. And... Like, just no. <laughs> like, you're basically just throwing your hands up in the air mm -hmm. at, at that point. Because you, you're just going to take a bunch of damage. So, and that just puts you off on the wrong foot from the get-go. So, that is my Blame Celestalon of getting that many shitty draws in a row of facing AFK three times in a row on turn three. I, I think the one that I would nominate for you this week would be during our duo session when we were fishing for... A damn oh <laughs> yeah, <Megasaur. laughs> and we were on we were on Tepper and six, just constantly refreshing for like three straight rounds, and we're like, where the f is it? Like we couldn't find it at all. Nope, we're just like, uh, shit. Yeah. What are we gonna do here? It's like great, we've just spent thirty gold, and we have not improved a board state at all. <laughs> right, you're just like, uh, but at least in that one, I was I took second. Mm -hmm. So, like, it wasn't, like, a huge deterrence, but, like, it was still something uh, of that I thought was of note. Uh, you know, sometimes just can't find it, even if it is just one specific thing. Uh, but, you know, that's really the only way to Im improve the board state at that given point in time in that particular round. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, let's go ahead. Let's jump into our pick two of the week, which is all about... The House of Manastorm as we pit Millhouse Manastorm up against Maleficent Manastorm. And so looking at the average placement, not too much of a differential here. Uh, we have Millhouse who is at 4.46. Maleficent not too far behind at 4.5. And uh, then the pick rate is actually, you know, pretty noticeable. Uh, Millhouse is favored uh, at a 32.5% pick rate compared to Maleficent who is at 11.9%. So, you know, at looking at these two, uh, Maleficent does tend to seem to have, like, a, a more consistent, like, top four finish, despite having a worse average placement, which I thought was kind of interesting. Millhouse being able to have a little bit higher, like, first place finishes kind of, like, made it uh, a little bit, like, tilted more in his favor just due to that. Uh, but the second, third, and fourth place finishes are a very... Uh, you know, consistent for Maleficent in this regard. But really the biggest contrast between these two particular heroes in Battlegrounds is just the the turn win rate that we see. Millhouse is uh, honestly just a lot better throughout practically like the entirety of the game. Maleficent does have like a lower combat win rate when we're talking about the early game. I mean, obviously, a lot of that has to do with the fact that Millhouse does have, you know, the two gold minions. So having cheaper minions means you have, you know, more minions on board, ergo a higher chance at winning that combat phase. And uh, even when you're talking about, like, the the cycling when it comes to taverning up uh, with these two heroes, there's not too many differences there as well. But I know ever since the Millhouse rework... Uh, there's definitely been sort of an adjustment period where players are trying to, like, relearn what the best method to level up as Millhouse is. 
And, you know, it, it seems like at least with where the tiers are, Melos has actually seen a little bit of an improvement here in recent weeks. But do you feel like that is enough uh, to choose him over Maleficent, who is kind of like tied to that mech synergy through her hero power? You're muted. Ah, uh, ah. once per once per per episode. Um, I do think it is uh, uh, smarter to go with Millhouse over Maleficent, uh, just because of the the non being your getting your hands tied to Max. And that's and that's truly it. It's you know you're you're basically looking at. You know, you're you're looking at getting tied down to mechs or getting to play a, a unique game in Millhouse that kind of makes you change the way you think about every every single round because everything is tossed up in the air. Um, so I would personally take Millhouse over Melissa. I think they're both just fine um, because mechs, Divine Shield mechs are in a decent place right now. Um, but Millhouse, I think, is just a, a stronger, a stronger uh, option at this point. Yeah, my my issue with Millhouse at this point is more so. I feel like I have to think a lot more on a turn-to-turn -turn basis compared to mm -hmm. what it was in yesteryear. Not even yesteryear. Yester patch. Um, <laughs> uh, whereas with Maleficent, it's more paint by the numbers, and I am always going to be more comfortable running Maleficent because of that. Now, is that always going to be the right move? Maybe not. Uh, but I do know, even since the Millhouse patch i have had better results with maleficent and you know while millhouse does have more flexibility i have had pretty good success with the uh either death rattle builds when it comes to running mech or even adding some swordless into the mix as well i don't i don't necessarily think you 100 percent have to run mech with maleficent but it does you know help just having that extra attack with say you know your uh your cobalt's little bro because uh, I, I have definitely had a few games where I just have, uh, like, a Deflectobot, a Sorolisk, and then I'm running Death Rattle. Or, you know, maybe I have two Deflectobots, and then that's it in regards to that sort of synergy. So, I don't think you have to necessarily go all in, but you can use Deflectobot as, like, that build-in piece with Maleficent, and then do just fine without the complete synergy across the board. Uh, but, you know, just knowing that I don't have to worry about, okay, like, my breakpoints are kind of messed up. Maybe I don't have a token. Now I'm having to wait another turn in order to level up with, like, someone like Millhouse. That stuff always worries me, where I have this constant struggle with figuring out whether or not I'm keeping pace with the lobby, or if I'm falling too far behind. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big thing is like sometimes I truly feel like you are completely screwing yourself if you think you're going to be get, uh, falling behind in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Uh that's the that, honestly that's as that's as uh like that's as tough a decision as in turn 2. Truly, like you have to take it into account. Do I level up turn two, or do I buy a tavern one hero and let everyone else level up, and then I'm behind? Mm -hmm. Like that's how early it is, and it's it's those kind of decisions that you have to either go all in with and have faith that if it was the wrong decision, you can make up for it, or it just completely screws you. Um, and yeah, it's just I don't know. It's it's a constant struggle with me. Like that's that's a big issue with me is playing from behind, as one would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going Maleficent. Uh, looks like you're on Team Millhouse in this case. I am on Millhouse. Everything coming up Millhouse. 
So not good. Shut up. Everything's coming up Millhouse. <laughs> I I don't have the uh the gif ready on hand. The Simpsons did it. Yep. I mean they they did a lot of stuff. I mean they predict the future, didn't you know? That is very true. On multiple occasions. Mm-hmm. Nostradamus over here. But anyways, guys, uh, that is going to do it for us here tonight in the Tavern for Tavern Tales. Uh, so I do want to thank everyone who has been joining us tonight uh, for this new episode. So if you guys want to help us out, please do us a favor and head on over to iTunes and write us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, been kind of quiet on the iTunes front in that regard. Yeah. Uh, A-holes. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, if you don't want to write us a review, you know, consider, like, contacting us on social media because, you know, we still want to hear from you. No, keep, mm -hmm. keep in touch. So, Ed, why don't you let them know how they can do that? All right. So you can reach us through email at taverntalespodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we are on Twitter, and that's at, at taverntaleshs. Uh, we do stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash taverntaleshs, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we are on Discord. Come join us over there at discord.me slash OWL show. Uh, you can follow me personally, Ednar, on Twitter at, at Ednar83 or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Ednar. Totem, where can they find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter, uh, primarily blaming Celestalon. That would be at totally drunk CTR. And I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash totally drunk, where. Uh, I, I think the plan is moving forward. I'll stick to Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I'll say 7 p.m. Pacific time will probably be the best uh, time frame. So, you know, I'll focus a little bit more on Harsu and Battlegrounds in on that front. So, hope to see you guys out there soon. But I do want to thank you again for joining us for episode number 18 of Tavern Tales. I've been your host, Tumbly Drunk, joined as always by my co-host, Ednar, and we'll see you guys back in the tavern next week. Take care. Peace out. <laughs>